Hey guys, this is Elias with Softly, and today I'm going to show you how to import Metabox clonable fields and clonable groups using a CSV file and WPL import. Now guys, let's just get on with that and upload our file. Right? So next I'm going to select the post type I want to import, which in this case is this very obvious Metabox post type. Right? So I don't have any posts here, as you can see. So I'm going to select new items, continue to step 2. And here on step two, I just need to double check that our import file is looking good, which in this case it is. We do have 104 rows to be imported. And this is the data we're going to uh, get imported using our Metabox import pattern. So let's just continue to step three. And here I'm going to drag and drop my title, which is this one here, and scroll down to a Metabox pattern, then enable my field group. And here we have the fields we have uh, for this video. Now guys, in today's video, like I said before, we're only going to focus on the clonable fields and the clonable groups, which is a feature Metabox has, uh, so you can add as many uh, elements or groups as you want. Now, if you're coming from Jet Engine or ACF, you may know this as a repeater, right? So I'm going to show you guys how this works real quick, uh, right? So here we have this simple text. We have here a single image. And finally, we have here this group, which contains a simple text field and a single image. Now, if you wanted to add many more simple text fields here, you just need to click on the Add More button, and Metabox will just keep creating those for you. Now, you can do the same with this image, right? So I can keep adding more and more uh, infinitely, right? And the difference here between these uh, clonable fields and this clonable group is that, well, this is just a field. And here in this group, you can add as many fields as you want, right? So if you wanted to have a group with, uh, I don't know, maybe a radio field here and many other things, you can do that. And when you click on the add more button, it will add uh, all of the fields contained in that group instead of a single field. So that's uh, basically the difference. So now that we know what we're dealing with here, I'm going to go back here to WPL import and show you guys how this actually works. Now for clonable things, uh, meaning uh, fields and groups, we have two ways of importing the values. We have the fixed way and the variable way. Now the main difference here is basically uh, say you have uh, a property, right? This is This are actually properties. Guys, so these properties have uh, four different rooms, right? Uh, the master bedroom, two kids uh, rooms, and maybe a service room, right? So if all of these 104 properties had the same number of uh, rooms per property, right? Well, you could use this fix mode and add uh, here, for example, four rows here. So this will be the field for the first room, which is the master bedroom, something like that. Uh, here are the two uh, kit rooms, and here is the service room, something like that, right? And then you will need to drag and drop the values to each one of these uh, fields, and WPL import will get that data imported. Now, if you had a variable number of uh, rooms per property, say uh, some of them have three rooms, some of them have seven rooms, some of them have 20 rooms, I don't know. Uh, well, guys, uh, this won't do for you because the WPL import will just create uh, the ones that are inside of this uh, fixed number of rows, right? So I'm going to delete all of this and I'm going to select the variable CSV. Now I'm selecting CSV because I'm using CSV. But this will also work for Excel, uh, maybe uh, Google Sheets, OneDrive, and anything that has a spreadsheet-like uh, structure, right? But if you're using XML, you may want to use the variable XML. Now, uh, again, I'm going to go back here. And guys, I'm going to zoom in real quick here so you can see how is our data structured. So we have here this group text. And this group text has uh, a few different uh, image file names this is the first one and this is the second one and this is the third one and as you can see they are uh, just separated with pipes right so uh, i'm just gonna drag and drop this element right here and i'm gonna make sure that this separator character is the same one my fields are using right so this will work 
then here for the image I'm going to select variable csv2 and I'm going to drag and drop my image element and again guys this is separated with pipes so this is good and just for these images I'm going to enable this feature that says search through the media library for existing images before importing new images and what this will do is just uh, double check before downloading an image that that image doesn't already exist in our site now if the WPL import finds an image that it's uh, already in our site it will use that image instead of downloading a copy of it it's just that simple we have other videos where we talk a little bit more in depth about this uh, but for now let's just work with it and continue with our import now guys these two are the clonable fields right but here we have the clonable group and it has the same logic the difference is that uh, if you add a row here right it will add all of the fields contained in that group instead of the single uh, row right but again in this example we don't have uh, these kinds of data so i'm going to select variable csv and i'm going to drag and drop my group text here and the group image here now i'm going to enable the same option here right and right here i'm going to ignore blank fields now if i hover on the question mark uh, it says if the value of the element or column in your file is blank it will be ignored use this option when some records in your file have a different number of repeating elements than others now what this will do is just make sure that our data is consistent in case some of these uh, elements have uh, a blank space or something like that right so uh, guys with this we have everything we need so i'm just gonna blast through this continue to step four uh, i don't want to overthink this uh, unique identifier thing too much you can just click on the auto attack button and wpl import will take care of that for you and if you want to know more just read this text or go to our website at wplimport.com click on the docs menu and you will find a lot more info there now guys uh, these other settings are pretty much self-explanatory but you can hover on the question marks and it will give you a more detailed description of it and here lastly we have these scheduling options which are very cool because it will allow you to run this import automatically on a schedule now guys without further ado let's just continue with our import right and this is gonna take a minute or two while WPL import unloads all of the images and again guys uh, if you want to know more about how to import or export other kinds of fields or if you have uh, more complex data in your website right maybe you have a bunch of WooCommerce products with metabox custom fields in them or maybe you're uh, importing some uh, real estate data with a bunch of properties and a great variety of fields checkbox uh, radios galleries and whatnot you can always check out the other videos in our channel or go to our website at wpillimport.com to find more info and other videos with real world examples in them as for this video, I'm going to just let it run here while WPL import unloads all of the images and come back when it's ready. Alright guys, so WPL import is finished importing our Metabox custom fields, so let's see if that's true. Let's go here to our Metabox post type. And we have 104, which is great because this is the number we expected. Now let's uh, open this one up, see what's going on here. And there you go guys, we have a bunch of text fields here with the uh, clonable text field and then we have a bunch more of images right in the uh, single image clonable field and here we have our clonable groups with different uh, data right we have our text fields and the image fields uh, populated which is great and that's it guys that's how you import metabox clonable fields and clonable groups with wpl import and the metabox import pattern now again guys uh, if you want to know more about how to import or export other metabox custom fields or if you're using jet engine or acf to handle your post types and custom fields you can always check out the other videos in our channel or go to our website at wplimport.com for now thank you for watching guys and see you next time